A very good morning to everyone. Hope I'm audible to all. <clears throat> Some throat issue like. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it's it's it is possible uh, to increase the volume a bit. So checking my just. Thing. You have selected Microsoft George as the default voice. I have some throat problems, so I think because of that, the audio is not completely clear. That's fine, ma'am. That's fine. It's fine. So very good morning to everyone. We are here today morning to discuss about uh, technopedagogy integration. I could see some faces who are very familiar and names who, who has attended already these sessions in various programs. Uh, but it is also, again, part of this particular session. Uh, it may look like you are listening again to the same session, but you don't have a choice. You need to attend, but you can listen and try to take the... Um, because. It, even though the same person takes same person presentation every time, there will be surely some new information. We request those people who are again attending this uh, to take up those points. But uh, the others who are joining, uh, I would uh, like to be uh, participating in this session. I would request all of you to be part of it. There is no much to take, take notes, but I want all of us, all of you to be part of it be participative so that you will be able to carry something at the end of the session. So that is how we are going to go ahead. And last four days, you have been learning a lot of tools and about uh, technology development and all that. So I would request uh, at least four people to share. What, what have you learned in the last four days? So I want you to raise your virtual hand so that we can I call you out, allow you to open your mic. First, four people will be given the chance. What have you learned? You should not tell me the tool names. You should tell pedagogically what you have learned in the last four days. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ganesh from Tamil Nadu. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, uh, the, these four days are golden days for us. Already we have uh, learned many ICT tools. We have the OER and the ethics and the CC components uh, and the content creation, stop motion, and uh, many animation tools and the subject specific tools, especially in physics and chemistry. Also, we have learned in our new tools. And also, we are uh, very happy to see the uh, Max tools that is uh, created by NIC. Uh, though we have learned with GeoGebra, but it is uh, very happy because it is an Indian product. That's why we thought of that now. Uh, we have learned uh, many things to implement in our state house. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Telangana Syed, sir. Mr. Syed Ali, you can unmute yourself. Yeah. Hello, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. At uh, the outset, I would like to thank the uh, entire NCRD team for providing some uh, informative and excellent sessions. Uh, I can surely say that uh, these four days being so informative, uh, now I can uh, uh, not only cascade what I've learned at the same time, I can reflect on my own classroom. And um, at the same time, we do have few knowledge about a few uh, AI tools, but how effectively we can use in our classrooms uh, to get out the learning outcomes. Uh, that was my uh, first takeaway. And at the same time, so how well we can uh, make sure uh, reading and all other aspects of uh, language can be uh, generated uh, with creating lots of uh, interest and also making children the part and parcel of the classroom. Uh, that what I have learned 
uh, and i'm really thankful for that i am assuring once again to casket the same thing uh, in telangana with the help of our coordinator and entire asia thank you very much ma'am thank you sir amar vaju uh, sir lakshminathan sir yeah ma'am uh, good morning ma'am uh, this is lakshminathan from telangana so uh, last uh, yesterday session uh, ai uh, content uh, e content development uh, I, i learned more in towards pedagogy uh, how to create uh, uh, through the ai uh, uh, some uh, so i said uh, boshini app and uh, killing ai.com uh, uh, like uh, 3d animation pipeline uh, studio animation pipeline uh, these are very new but uh, i learn more and more now. and uh, moreover uh, flip book uh, etc items are towards we are going to uh, inculcate in a, in our pedagogy uh, it is more helpful to us uh, through this session and all the sessions are very excellent madam thank you for uh, being a part of this program thank you thank you so much sir subra subramanyas kumar sir you can unmute yourself Uh, good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Uh, yes, ma'am. Is how to get the attention of the children in classroom and engage them in learning activities so that we achieve the uh, learning outcomes, the expected learning outcomes. And the best possible way is to create online content or anything which children look at with fascination and so that they involve and they keep their backbone erect and learn the things and then implement this is what and then uh, in last 2 3 days we have learned about uh, creating content online content and then uh, whether it is on video uh, visual content how to create these things using the ai technologies and uh, augmented and virtual realities all these things we had learned that's it ma'am okay thank you sir thank you lakshwadi team has returned that can maybe given a chance but nobody has raised the hand somebody because four people i have taken i can give one chance for one person from lakshwadi but nobody has raised the hand so we have not given you a chance when there is a chance given you should raise it in your virtual hand right So I'll take in between. <coughs> right. Thank you so much for sharing what you have learned in the last four days. So all the things which <coughs> so many virtual land is coming in the chat box. Virtual land should come from the uh, from the icon. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> However, those who have raised your hand, we will give you some chance to speak in the middle when there is some question. right so you have learned in the last four days a lot of things about uh, how content can be developed and what are the various initiatives have taken and today we are moving for a discussion on how this can be taken into a classroom in a um, in a kind of a planned manner so basically this particular session is a consolidation of what you have learned on the last four days so that is why it is on the last day next one hour we are going to focus on that about how we can put all these together what you have learned on the four days into one shell so that we can take it to the classroom in an effective manner so all of you have learned about e content development so why we have to develop e content development so let me give chance to people who have raised their hands in the um uh in the chat box mr rajesh pramandaman can be given a chance to um unmute themselves mr rajesh why you have to develop e content so you can unmute yourself and speak out good morning ma'am Good morning, sir. This is Rajesh from Andhra Pradesh, ma'am. Actually, A N, you know, Andhra Pradesh. Okay. We have, we, in order to develop uh, interest among children, we have to inculcate the A tools 
to our regular classroom teaching and as well as the preparation of working plans also. This uh, involves the children more and more effectively. That's uh, why, why I raised my hand to you. Okay, so one is like your e-content can help children to deliver the content effectively. Uh, another person, Deep Malia Bhattacharya. Sir, you can unmute yourself. I'm going to only give options to people who have raised earlier their hands. Sir, you can unmute yourself. Deep Malia yes. Bhattacharya. Yes, good morning, madam. Good morning, sir. Hello. So why you have to develop... Am I audible, ma'am? Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Why you have actually, to be content? Uh, if I discuss from my point of view of my state, actually, I'm living in the northeast state, Tipura. So, there are so many remote areas also. So, it is not possible always to give the best uh, organized training program, especially among the students in different subjects also. So, by using okay. our, by uh, our state, by the you know, one of the in initiative of our state government. You are using the Bande Tipura channel, and uh, sometime also you are providing some workbook also based on the NCIT translated book. Book. Most probably people are aware that we have translated the NCIT books also in our local language that is Bengali. So by using the e-content, we can reach in every corner of the state. It may be this area, maybe very much remote area, but in our state, all the corner, all the students are now accessing their NCIT books. That is our, we can say by the help of our state government, we are we are able to now by using the e-content and the NCT book, we are able to reach each and every students of our state. Okay. Thanks, madam. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Nagendran, sir. Nagendra Kumar. You can unmute yourself. You have to tell why you have to learn to develop e-content. It's a personal question. You have to tell from your point of view. Nagendra Kumar, sir. You are able to unmute yourself? Nagendra Kumar, sir. You have not unmuted yourself. You are on mute. Yes, sir. Yeah, good morning, madam. Good morning. So my side, it is easy way to learn e-content. That means I can explain easily to the students. Personally, it's also easy to uh, describe or uh, to make lesson plans by using tools. And uh, even we can uh, explain easily tough topics also in a virtual manner. Nowadays, in our Andhra Pradesh, IFP panels are let's supplied in all government schools. Let's not get into the state perspective. It is what is your perspective. Why do you want to develop e-content? So you are very clearly given your point. So let me take that point. There are three people given three different responses. The first response was e-content can help you to uh, conduct the class in an effective manner. So you wanted to create. Though second, second response was from the state perspective, but he also put up the point that it helps to reach everyone. When I create e-content, I can reach to everyone and I can provide access to content to everyone. So that was the second response. The third response was it helps you to deliver your content in a simpler and a better manner. So we have seen like three benefits of developing uh, e-content. If we give you an option for everyone to give a response, everyone may tell your own response, right? Why I have to use technology, right? I want to know everyone's response because it's already, uh, I have spent for getting three people's response. It has taken more than seven minutes. So I'm going to give you a, a mess link in the chat box now. So all of you are going to give your responses. Just give me a minute. I have put a link in the chat box. Everyone will click on this link. You will be getting a screen where you can add your response. So there will be a plus symbol where you will click and write the response for my question. My question is, 
how can digital technology help in your classroom? Not state, not uh, your initiative. Think as a teacher, in whichever subject you teach, in whichever level you teach, <coughs> you have to write your response in this link. Let us see all your responses. You have to just click the plus symbol at the bottom. When you click on the plus symbol, you'll get a box. You can write here. If it is possible for you, you can also click a cam photo of yourselves. Add your photo in this add response. So in my screen, I'm showing you. When you click on the plus symbol, you will get a box. Write your response here. Write your name in the subject. Those who have already posted, you can go here, edit, and correct. In the subject, you will write your name like this. You will write your response. Click the camera and take a photo and submit your photo. Those who have submitted without your name and photo, I request it to redo, edit it. Don't do redo. Please go to edit. Click on edit and then do it again. Update. You have to do it and update. So we'll take next five minutes to complete. Uh, sorry, next two minutes to complete this work. Two hundred and eighty participants are there. So let us see how many of you are really in the session. Everyone should add your photo also. Yeah, Basu sir has added photo. Thank you. Those have not added photo, you can just click edit and add your photo. Those who are posted, read the responses of others. Now I have given an enablement of giving a like. So you have to read others post and give likes to people's responses which you like. Only 40 people have given your response where 280 people are there. My question was very clearly how it will help. People should not copy paste from AI. No chatbot to be written. You have to write your response on your own. What? How do you feel technology can help your classroom? You can give likes to others' responses. You can see here there is a like. You read others' responses and give likes. I'll be giving another two minutes.
those who have done chatbot work has to delete and redo it again. Right, when we read this, what did we understand? There are so many people who have written lots of uh, points. So with this, I'm starting my discussion for the day on integration of ICT in teaching, learning and assessment, which is also we can shortly call as techno-pedagogy integration. And I would like everyone to complete your activity of giving your responses in this when we are discussing this. So today we are going to discuss three main points on what, why, and how of techno-pedagogy integration. <clears throat> and also we will be integrating about the safety and security aspect. So before we go, we wanted to reiterate on what ICT refers to. Many of you would have come across this, but if you have not come across this, <clears throat> let us have a common understanding of what ICT refers to. Now, everyone was writing your response in this activity. You can see like earlier when I asked the question, only three people could respond within seven minutes about how digital technology could help us. But when we gave the Padlet activity, within that same seven minutes, we could get more than 50, 60 responses. Right? If everyone is active, active, 200 people could have given the response within the short duration. So, so all together, this particular technology of having a Zoom and Padlet, because through Zoom, I have given the link to all of you. And using that link, you were all able to send your response. Right? And in that response, all of us together have created a digital information. If you can see this particular screen, it is nothing but a complete information wall on how digital technology can help. We all together has created a digital information that can explain how digital technology can help, right? So this is what we call ICT as. Any hardware, software, a combination that can help us to create, store, retrieve, manipulate, send and receive digital information can be called as ICT. And at this point, when I want to say that as a teacher, I am using ICT, I am using a device, first of all, to connect. You are also connected through a device. You may be using a mobile, you may be using a, a laptop or a tab or a desktop. You are also using one hardware. I am also using my desktop. So all of us are using one hardware to first get connected. Second thing, our hardware is not connecting. The Zoom software is connecting us. The third thing, to create the digital information, we have used the software called Padlet. And all to work, we have internet connection. So that is what your ICT refers to. We have used all these four things as a hardware and software together to create the digital information to store. This is stored in my cloud. So for example, if I go to my, today now, now I have finished this activity. If I go to my dashboard, you can see that it is stored in my particular dashboard. So tomorrow I can always, if I wanted to open again and see, I can always open the sensing. So I'm able to store this because it is created as a digital information. And also here, for example, I have now started, I've given you option to like, but now I feel I have to give option to comment or I wanted to change some setting here. I can always go and retrieve back and edit 
So I'm seeing like I'm not able to see a light color. So I wanted a dark color background. I wanted to change the fonts. You can see immediately it is all getting reflected here, right? So I'm able to, if I read your out, since it is stored in the digital information, I'm able to retrieve and also do manipulation. So even I wanted to use this as a form, like where I wanted to reply to you, I can go always to here and there is possibility of giving a comment. So now I can say like, sir, I can add comment. I can give you feedback. I have received your information. I can give feedback here. It's well said. Right? So I can say like, you can elaborate. So this is also helping me in one place because it is in the digital information. I'm able to manipulate, change things which was not there in the initially. And where you are sending me information, I'm also able to receive and send back information. So this is what we call it as ICT. So when we say ICT here, what all makes forms the ICT is the hardware devices, the software, the Prezi, which I'm using here to communicate, the software, which I've used as Padlet, the software we have used as Zoom, all these together form ICT here. Not one thing. This is something we need to clearly understand. So ICT is not something that it is always existing. It, we can make the things to convert to ICT such that it is useful for doing all the six things. So that, that is how we define ICT as. So when we also know like why we should I use ICT, already we have got responses, so many responses here. I could see like all the responses which I have written has already come up here from each one of you. The very first thing is ICT can help us to collaborate. Right now what we have done as a collaboration, all of us together, at least as of now, 118 plus people. You can see like I can check out who all have really given the response. I can see everyone's name by people who have given the response. 119 people have given response here. One thing it helps me is we are able to collab collaborate and we are able to engage during the technology. If I don't use this activity, I keep talking like this, no presentation, no activity. I keep talking. How many of you will listen to me for next one and a half hours? Already we could see that 280 people are present. Only 119 people have given response. Remaining 150 people, are they really live in the session or they are busy with some other session? We don't know, right? So the engagement is not ensured in the classroom until and otherwise we can use certain technology tools. The very best first benefit is it helps us to engage with the learner, right? How do we engage? Not only with the learner, we both are getting engaged. As a listener, you are engaging with me and I am at least happy that 118 people are listening to me so I can still have to be conscious of what I'm speaking. Otherwise, it will be looking as if I'm talking to a device. That will not motivate me also to take a session with full heart, right? So now I know 118 people are listening to me. So I need to really speak properly. So this, this is one way that the engagement is ensured. Second thing, you are also engaged with the content. You are able to express yourself. Initially, when I ask questions to people that how it can help, within the short duration, I could only give opportunity to three people. Everyone was not able to be engaged due to time constraint. In our actual classrooms also, there is always a time constraint. All teachers want students to be engaged in our classroom. But why we are not able to engage is because we are not able to get sufficient time for ourselves to engage. We have to finish the syllabus. 
we have to finish. I also have to finish my content within one hour. If I keep on asking everyone to speak, I will not be able to complete my session. In that way, such kind of tools are helping us to really engage. And also it helps me to save the time, right? It is not only saving the time. If I have asked question, all of your answers, I will not be able to see again. Right now I can quickly see how many of you are really writing from your heart? How many of cut, copy, paste? How many of doing cut, copy, paste? Some of you are not even interested to share your views. You wanted to just Google it, cut and copy, paste the response. So you're going to become an SRG. When you're not convinced of it, what digital technology can do to you, or if you're not able to reflect, how will you go and train others? Right? So that is one of the reason that like helps a teacher to understand where do the learners stand. Many times in our classroom, we are in one way. We come, deliver, vomit our content, whichever, no, go. But here, when we use such technology, we can understand where teachers are, where students are. So that is one of the things which will help. And many times, if you are just listening to me for a longer time, you will not feel interesting to attend the session. No. Until you are participating, the session will not be interesting to the participant. So one another way is when a person is engaged, they feel that they are part of the learning process. So whatever responses that has come in the <clears throat> in this board, we can see very clearly that everyone realizes the importance of digital technology. So to, to put it short, what are the various benefits? Number one, a technology can help us to visualize content. Technology can also help us to engage. Technology can help us to collaborate. Technology can help us to use multimedia. Like it can support different people. Some of them will be interested only if something comes on the screen. Most of them may not be interested if only audio is keep on coming. Can anyone tell me what is the difference between my presentation, which I am using right now, and the usual PowerPoint presentation? Can you write in the chat box? What is the difference between normal PowerPoint presentation and the presentation which I am using right now. It is interactive, okay. I am not about the tool. What is the difference you are saying? Only but particularly this tool, which I am using right now. How is this different from the normal presentation? I am using a presentation called, tool called Prezi. Not about my session, only about this particular tool. Okay. All topics are seen in one slide. It is, it is engaging. Okay. So if you see here, I could have used a normal PowerPoint presentation also. But why I chose this particular software called Prezi to make my presentation. You can see in one slide all the things which I'm going to cover in this particular session. So you are very clear that I will be only going to discuss about this. I'm going from the main screen to the particular screen. This can be done in your PowerPoint also by giving hyperlink. But what is the major difference? When I click on an image, it is zooming out. When I don't want, it is going in. In my presentation, I have more of images. So I wanted to zoom in and show when I am going to talk in a large screen. In a normal PowerPoint presentation, we cannot do this. It is static. Once you have fixed it, it will look like that only. So that is one reason I have chosen this software instead of PowerPoint. The second thing is, when I use this in the online class, mostly in the online class, people don't have 
attention towards the session because we are not having that human touch. So you get bored very fast than the normal physical classroom. So I have to keep your eyes hooked to the system. That can be done only by something moving on the screen. If there is no color, if there is no movement, our eyes will not have a tendency to look at the screen, right? So when there is a movement, automatically, our, as the physical, the, the way we are created with our eyes, automatically it looks at your screen. This is one another reason because of which I have chosen the software. In the last four days, you have all learned about many softwares, how to develop many content, all this you have learned, right? But now it is very high time for us to learn about how we will do this. So when we wanted to learn about how, this is something in the last four days you would have learned about Addy. You must have heard about Addy, but we are going to again focus on this with very specific thing to integrating into your classroom and across the process. We are just going to recall what you have learned all this few things with certain ex examples, but there are very important points that we need to focus today. We, we have already learned <clears throat> in the last four days, whenever you wanted to develop a digital content, first of all, you need to decide whether there is a need for a digital content. When you wanted to use not only digital content development, but when you wanted to use content in your classroom, also, you need to decide whether it is required in your classroom or not. All content doesn't demand digital technology. All learners do not require digital technology. All contexts do not require digital technology. So we should really ensure, first we need to analyze our content, our learners, our context to decide whether I need to use technology or not in my classroom. Is it always required? For example, today in my classroom, I want to discuss with students about air pollution. Okay, you go to Andaman or Lakshwadi, in your classroom, you're teaching about air pollution. How much your students can understand air pollution? Whether you are in your particular place, air pollution is visible to the students. Many students may understand air pollution is something smoke. That is what they may think as air pollution, right? You go to Tamil Nadu or in some metro cities, if you talk about air pollution in your classroom, students may visualize traffic pollution the smoke which is produced by vehicle because of traffic. You come to Northeast. We have traveled to some of the Northeast. When we went to Nagaland, we didn't see anywhere not. Anywhere we couldn't see air pollution at all, being from Delhi. But you go to Jammu and Kashmir, the air is polluted with a lot of dust. In some places, we see one place, no air pollution. But another place since they are breaking all drilling in the mountains. So there is a lot of dust that pollutes the air. So in all our classroom, if you talk about air pollution, every child may not visualize air pollution the way it is being taught. So in that case, we need to bring certain context to show to our children, this is how air pollution means, other than what you see. So children, whatever they could not see, they should be exposed to them to see. There was one funny thing that happened, but it was uh, really an eye opener, which I would like to share with everyone. You all are aware that there is a program called Kala Utsav, right? Every year we have Kala Utsav where there is a cultural program, which happens. And during this cultural program, like all students from all the state comes to comes together to present. So the very first Kala Utsav, when the students were there, I was in a discipline committee. So I was overlooking the discipline 
is there any children's problem and all that so suddenly i saw in one of the in the ground uh, one uh, mizoram girl was standing and they were actually finished their dance performance and they just came with their costume the tribal costume which they have worn for presenting so you know the northeast costumes are very different so that particular girl was wearing a costume like a pakka tribal uh, one particular tribe's costume where they have performed and she was standing there some children from south two three boys from south were going to the girl and asking for taking a selfie with her and their english was not very clear to this girl because she doesn't know proper english so they have a language communication problem and these boys were behind her to take a photo and this girl was running away from these boys as if these boys are chasing her so i have to come there as a discipline committee member and i stop them and ask what is going on so these boys were telling me madam we want to take one selfie with this girl i said why do you want to take a selfie you are all same like children so why do you want very particularly a selfie with her these boys told me immediately ma'am if i take selfie i can go back and tell to my friends that i met a foreign girl i told how come she is a foreign girl she is from manipur ma'am manipur is in india but she is a foreign girl i was asking how do you say that manipur is in india and she is from manipur and the children were saying indian women will not expose their body this was their statement so the kind of understanding children have about costume because that particular children are from a rural background where only they have seen women wearing mostly sarees or salwar they have not never they have been shown even the costume which is there in the whole country so they think that if you little bit show your uh, little bit body is exposed that means they are foreigners they are not indians so then we actually stop them and we show the costume of every state in the country to them then they were feeling very bad for themselves behaving like that with that the other girl say so then they said sorry for that and they went to date our children this is reverse also this happened with some time like we used some southern names in our curriculum for ict and we implemented in northeast they couldn't recognize that this is a name they thought it is some content when you write sita did this or or shivakumar did this they think that shivakumar is content so they were asking what is the meaning of shivakumar so we have a very great diversity many times we are not able to bring everything into the class when we went to nishta training we met one of the teacher who have come as a state resource group from odisha the training was happening in bhuneshwar and the teacher is almost 48 to 50 years old he was telling to us that this is the first time in his life he has traveled in train and he has come from his village to bhuneshwar and he is a social science teacher in his life he has not traveled in a train he has not come to his capital at his total 50 years what kind of exposure that teacher could give to the student it is not only social sciences if we see in all subjects we have difficulty in giving exposure to the children making them visualize me being from south and from tamil nadu so whenever they taught me like winter season snow for me winter means your temperature is 28 degree because our temperature is always 32 34 degree celsius so if it is 28 that is winter for us but coming in delhi and feeling 4 degree minus 2 degree then you feel what is the difference between your understanding of winter it took me nearly 40 years to understand what is winter because in school i couldn't visualize that 
in our classroom, we are lots of content in every subject that cannot be visualized with our neck, that cannot be seen. Such content needs real technology to help them to visualize. So let us uh, do a small activity. I request uh, everyone to install two apps. If you have attended already one of my session, you would have already installed, but if you have never attended, I request you to install two apps. <laughs> I'm writing the names of the app. Kindly give install to install this two app. After five minutes, I'll start the activity. I'll explain till that, right? So for example, we all are from different uh, uh, states. Many of us would have not, we have been learned about Ajanta Caves in our subject and we never learned about, we have never seen Ajanta Caves. So how do I bring that into my classroom when I have not seen certain things? I don't know whether uh, this tool has been introduced to social science teachers during your subject specific class, but I want everyone to experience this. So you will download it and after which, when I tell you will do the activity, but now please listen uh, how I am doing it. So for example, I have not seen Ajanta Keeps at all. So this is one of the uh, tool, which is in the uh, website form as well as the app form, but uh, there is a difference in the way. So I'm just going and searching Agenda. This I can do it in the Google also, but what will happen in Google? So I'm just go showing the difference of searching both. I'm searching for Agenda. You can see tours of Agenda are coming. All the Wikipedia are coming. Ajanta shoes is also coming. Images of Ajanta is also coming. Everything, TripAdvisor is coming. But in this, when I give Ajanta, it came, comes about only the Ajanta caves. So that is where we have to use more of educational tools in our classroom rather than using generic tools like this. So for example, I've taken Ajanta caves. You can see pictures, videos. So one of the thing I'm just seeing is, I want to see how the cave number two looks like. So I'm getting into now cave number two. I'm seeing there is a Buddha cave, Buddha statue. I'm trying to see it around. How the entrance is, how the flooring is, how the ceiling is. Ceiling is also so beautifully. There are lots of arts. So I'm trying to zoom in and see also what kind of artwork is done. This is not possible with generic softwares. Okay, so this is how our tools can help. I asked few people who have already visited Agenda Caves. I showed this tool and asked them, which is more effective? You went to Agenda Caves and saw the Agenda Caves straight, directly. So they were telling that when we went to Agenda Caves, all the caves were not allowed to enter. And most of the caves are dark. There is no sufficient light. We couldn't see this arts on the wall. Sometimes even the direct visit cannot bring that effectiveness, right? So what I'm going to request you is, I'm going to give you five minutes now. Everyone should get up from your place. All of you are sitting now. All of you will get, get up from your seat. You will open the art and culture app, you will go and search for Ajanta. The same way I opened, you open any one of the cave, just turn 360 degree up, then walk around, see how you are able to feel it. Second thing, open the sky view light, okay? And also walk around your whole room where you're sitting. See every nook and corner of the room and come back it's 10.40 in my uh, time. I'll be giving you five minutes. 10.45, all of you should come back to your place. And then I will start my discussion. Next five minutes for you to explore. Okay? But nobody should sit in your place. You should get up, move around. Please come back. Oh, 
for the tools you have to you have to explore two tools i have put one is sky view light two apps which you have to install in your mobile sky view light you have to just see open the sky view light app see walk around your room to every corner 360 degree you see completely your room up down what are you observing right second is you have to also see google art and culture when you're going and going through the google art and culture you will also select one search for ajanta and in the ajanta you will select only one key walk around and explore and come back and when you are seeing sky view light you take should take one screenshot of which you like you are seeing many things take one screenshot in your mobile which which you like right so you all will be back another 3 minutes already 2 minutes over nobody should sit in your seat you should walk around and see both apps you have to explore in 5 minutes and you should be back last 2 minutes you can do both at any order first or second is not this you have to explore both the app in 5 minutes you have to walk around see around take your camera mobile to up down every side All of you can come back. Whoever can open your video, we want you to open your video for next five minutes. Whoever can open your video, have to keep your video open for for next five minutes. Okay, yeah. So there are many people who are sharing in the chat box your screenshot, which you have explored. three people can raise your hand to share your experience raise your virtual hand first three people who is raising your virtual hands but if you have already spoken we will not give you option okay henmin lal sir you can unmute yourself ma'am good morning ma'am good morning sir ma'am yesterday in social science uh, uh, group we have been shown this but then i was doing while sitting now when i walk, walk walking make the trick more uh, walking did the trick man thank you ma'am thank you 
Lakshmi, ma'am. Ma'am, yesterday in social science uh, uh, group, we have been shown this. Yeah. Madam. Yes, Lakshmi, ma'am. Yeah, I. it was uh, excellent. Illuminating, uh, like uh, all stars are meeting and it is forming one uh, shape. I found a uh, few shapes like fish. And okay. uh, I have sent I'm, it. Not, it. You don't need to share. What did you see? What, how was your experience? What did this you is, feel when did you when you did this? It was great, madam. Great experience to uh, see this, uh, use this app. Okay. Sukanta, sir, be very specific. What was your feeling? What you felt about the content? Yeah, Sukanta, sir. You can unmute yourself and speak, sir. Your audio is not coming up. Though you are unmuted, you are not audible. audible. By the time you set up, I'm going to the Good next. Morning, yeah. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Hello? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Sir, your audio is not clear. It is okay, ma'am. Yeah, please go ahead, sir. How was what was your experience? Actually, it's a wonderful experience, madam. What I observed that uh, really nicely we can see variety of uh, creatures. Even whenever moving, variety of uh, shadows and all. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, Saurabh, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Saurabh, sir. Yes, ma'am. What was yes, your experience? Madam, it was excellent, ma'am. Well, for the first step, it, uh, uh, the 3D version of the one animal came. And for the second step, the, uh, we are feeling that the uh, I am at the uh, Ajunta Cave. Uh, that the experience was excellent, ma'am. Thank Very you. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, Madhuri, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm actually thrilled. I'm experiencing like I'm in the space when I'm seeing like along with the planets I'm moving. So it's a thrilled experience and I'm excited because the moment I'm seeing the stars, planets, as well as uh, the, uh, the, uh, the space, whatever they are. Uh, thrilled, ma'am. Happy, happy. I'm experiencing some happy yeah. moments the moment I'm into it. Thank you. Uh, can I request the admin team to take a few photographs of participants because they open their video? Uh, there is kindly please take photographs when they're sharing as well. Yeah. Uh, Arun, sir. Hello, ma'am. Good morning. This is Arun Monohar from Tamil Nadu. Yeah. Yes, uh, actually, uh, my students are from a poor background and they're from a village. They don't have an opportunity to uh, explore these places in their whole lifetime. So if I show this to them in my classroom, uh, it'll be extremely awesome for them. I felt that I I, I felt that from their position. So th this is what I I felt. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, Ria, madam. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Namaste, madam. I am from West Bengal, and the sky blue light app is so mesmerizing. I uh, saw so many planets and constellations. Uh, the Capricorn is there. And there's there is my sunshine too. And then that is the Google and Art, uh, Culture app. I did not visit two uh, Ajanta Caves and I was in uh, cave number uh, 19 and it was mesmerizing, madam. Thank you, madam, for this app and sharing. I, I also share with my students it with. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, two more people I'm just taking. After that, we'll start the discussion. Manjula, ma'am. Manjula ma'am and Soma ma'am. Both will be given an opportunity after that. We'll go. Manjula ma'am, you can unmute. Good, man, good morning ma'am. Good morning ma'am. Yes. I'm feeling good as if I'm in the space. Uh, I have never experienced such an, ex uh, such an experience. And uh, also I'm able to see my zodiac sign. Uh, that's yeah. really wonderful right. ma'am. Students will enjoy a lot. And in the art and culture app, I'm able to visit whatever the places I wished for. In one two in within okay. two three. Right. Yeah. So ma'am. 
last person to share? Ma'am, you can unmute yourself. Yes, ma'am. In, in a word. Ma'am's is stuck up. Okay. Right. Let's go ahead. Anyway, her uh, internet has stuck up. It's a great paper. Ma'am, yours is uh, muted. Hello. Yeah, please go uh, ahead. Am I, am I audible? Now, ma yes, ma yes, ma yes, in a words, it's a mesmerizing experience to me. And I will share this experience with my students also. They are teacher educated in our college. And it's a great app, I think. Yeah. Thank you. So if you see this experience, many people were using it. When I was talking about here, one I told is when content needs it, we need to use it. Technology. When you saw the sky view light and um, Ajanta caves, one of the thing is this content. <coughs> when you wanted to teach some historical places, it is not possible for us to every time give us it. <coughs> I'm extremely sorry. Uh, so sometimes there are content in our subject which we cannot give a direct experience. In that time, we can use technology. The other thing, why did I use that now in this session? I could have told you, just you go and explore. Why did I give you five minutes to make you explore? Any response? <coughs> You can write it in the chat box. Why do you think that I gave at this point? Why did I make this app to be explored? Okay. Experience has a better narration, okay? To visualize it, to have a personal experience, to involve you people, to have a clear idea. Very good. All your answers are right, right? Right? This is all one experience that I want you to directly experience it so that you will understand what I am speaking. The second thing is, which I have put here as a point, the context. Sometimes the context also demands technology to be used. In this particular play time, already the session has started at 9.45, you have been sitting for one hour without any movement, which is not good physically. Whenever we talk about using technology, we also talk about safety, security. Safety also involves physical safety. If you make us to sit one and a half hours without movement, surely you will get leg pain. Your muscles will start training. So there is a need to break and make you to do some physical movement. So I could have given you different experience of sitting and going through this app. But I made you to get up and go because since it is an online class, there is a need to break your, change your position of sitting. That is why I have kept this to walk around and see. Right? So that is one of the reasons sometimes it may not be required for a content to explain, but I may need for to context. For a particular reason, I need a technology. We should use for that purpose also. And we also need to choose technology to be used in the classroom only if it is suitable for the learner. If it is not suitable for the learner, we should not use it. So this, these are the three things which we have to keep in mind when we decide on doing it. And when you have decided to use technology, we need to design our lesson. How will I use it in my classroom? So I need to plan our classroom. So first thing you need to decide is in which medium I'm going to use. What kind, for example, now my class is online or whether my class is face-to-face, -face, whether it is in blended mode. So in, in this particular space, which tool will be useful in my classroom? 
So for example, since you were all connect, connected in online, I shared the link of the activity here. But if we are not in the Zoom, how should I share the link with you? I should have a group and I can share or I should take a QR code and keep it for you to scan and do it. All that are decided based on the medium. How to use the technology in the classroom is decided in the medium of the way you are going to take your classroom. That should be very clear. And uh, this you must have already come across. So we are expected to first choose the actual e-content that we will use according to the content, according to the situation, according to my medium, according to my context, according to my learner, which type of technology I will use it in my classroom. I have to make a choice of it. For example, if I have chosen to use video, then I have to choose which format of video. In the last four days, you have learned all this. You have learned about each format which format I should use in my classroom. My content is today I'm going to teach democracy, right? In social science, I'm going to prepare a video and teach this democracy. But in which format I will prepare my video? Should I just stand before camera and explain? Or should two people talk to each other? Or should I go to people and ask, what do you understand by democracy? And think bring perspectives to the classroom, we need to decide that. That is the second step. When we are designing our classroom, first we are deciding which technology you will use, which type of content you will use. Second is which format we will use. Formats are also decided based on your content. For which content, which format is suitable. When you wanted to show something, return on the board, right? Many times when you record it, how, how will you write in the board and record? You, you will turn like this to write. And your camera will be in the back end, which is recording, right? So most of the time we show our back and the focus on the camera will be not clear. So in that time, we need to do a glass screen recording. When you say glass screen, your content will be before you. You must have seen some IIT videos, Baiju's video. The presenter will stand and keep writing with a finger like this. The text will come in the front. That is called as glass screen video. So when you want to show a physics diagram, when you wanted to show a software where you are like GeoGebra or a Stellarium, showing in the back end, showing full screen is good, but you wanted to show the movement by showing moving in your hand. It has to be shown before you. So that is a type of glass screen video which we can create. So depending on the content, we need to really create our content. The second, third thing is we need to choose the appropriate tools for development or for using in the classroom. Development, you have learned all four days. There are several tools, why you should do, when to use, all that you have learned but for choosing some online tools or offline tools to be used in your classroom. For example, I'm using this Prezi software for my presentation. If there is no internet, I cannot use this in my classroom because it needs internet. But if there is internet, I can use this in my classroom because it has more images, it gives better things. So appropriate choice of the tool is very, very important. And the fourth thing is you also need to decide <clears throat> how you are going to use the technology as a supplement or a complement or in an integrated way or as infused. So please tell, let me know now. You can give your answer. This image itself is a e-content, right? I'm explaining to you about how to use. I am using this image as a e-content to support what I am speaking. So in which way I am using this e-content? Am I using it as a supplement or a complement or integrated or an infused way? Give your answer in chat box. Somebody has written infused, okay. Infused, okay. Integrated. <clears throat> 
infused, infused, integrated. Okay. More answers are coming as infused, integrated, supplement. Right. Okay. Let me give the answer. I am using it as a complement. Why? This image is a, is a e content which is supporting what I am speaking. It is complement what I am speaking. I am explaining to you and this image is making you to understand that better. So I am using this image as a complement with what I speak. So for you to understand, you can think of when you buy brew, they will give a jar to put that brew. When you buy boost, they will give a complement as a shaker so that you can put the boost and shake it and make the boost. So whenever it is called as complement, it will support what you are giving. Right? Now I am explaining, I am using image to support what I am using. Most of us use digital content in our classroom to complement what you are teaching. You may be teaching something to explain that better. You will show some text in PowerPoint. You will show some image in PowerPoint. So that is a complement way of using. What do you mean by supplement? I may give you after this session. Please, I'm going to give you now some videos to watch after this session. I have finished my content training, but I'm saying to extra to understand, go and watch these videos. What do you mean by supplement? When there is calcium less in your body, you will take calcium supplement as an additional, right? So similarly, when in your class, you are taught today in mathematics that Aryabhata invented this, but you are not teaching about Aryabhata. You will move to teaching mathematics. But you want children to know more about Aryabhata, huh? you can give a project saying that you go and watch this video on Aryabhata. So that is actually a supplement. Many times today in our classroom, we are using technology as supplement also. Then what is integrated and infused? I was using Padlet. Right? Padlet, it is a software. Today, I have put a question. Tomorrow, you can put a different question. Software is same, but question keeps changing according to the way I wanted to integrate that into my class. I want you to be participated. It is not something is supporting me teaching. I have not given for it extension. It is part and parcel of this class. So that is the example of the way I'm using in an integrated manner. Then what is infused? Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, So what is then infused? You all know did sky view light. Star was inside your room. All the planets were inside your room. You were in the sky. You cannot segregate and show that you are in your classroom. They are in the space. You were able to get along with the environment. You are part of environment. Environment is part of you. So all the tools which you have used, which you have learned in subject specific classroom, Stellarium, for example, right? GeoGebra, for example. For example, in social science, you must have learned about Bhuvan. All these are infused. When you use such tools, you are using infused. The subject cannot be segregated from the software. Software and are together. So when you wanted to understand integrated, it is like mixing sugar and pepper. You can mix it together, but again, you can separate mix pepper and sugar. Like that the tool can be used together, but it can be separated what content and what is your tool. But infusion is like adding lemon juice and water. You can feel if you more add more lemon juice, you can feel by the taste. You add more water, you can feel by the taste, but you cannot segregate it. 
right? So that is how your softwares are GeoGebra, Selenium. So when we are selecting the tools to use in your classroom, we need to ensure that which is required, at what level I should use my technology. Till today, we are very comfortably using supplementary and complementary. We have to move towards using integrated and infused so that we can get the benefit of technology inside our classroom. And when we go to the next level of develop, or when we say that like I'm preparing my lesson plan, now I have prepared my lesson plan in design phase. Now I'm going to develop all the materials which is required to implement in my classroom. That is what you have learned in the last four days. This phase you have learned in multiple sessions how to develop. But one thing which as a teacher I have to develop so that I can really effectively use technology is my knowledge. We all have discipline knowledge because we have done some BSc or MSc, BA, MA in a subject. So we have this knowledge already. We all have done BA, so we have pedagogy knowledge. In BA, we have learned about educational psychology. We already have a knowledge. We have learned educational sociology. And we have also learned when writing lesson plan, when we did internship, when we did practice, in your in-service, by experience, we have all got all this combination knowledge. Without even writing, we have got this knowledge. We have developed. Now something new is technology knowledge and its integration towards all others. For example, when will I, for which level I can use AR, VR? Can I use for all class children? We need to think about psychologically. We have learned developmental stages in psychology, which children will understand what is AR, VR, how they will be able to differentiate between virtual environment from the actual environment we have to apply. So all the knowledge we have got has to be brought. So how do you keep improving your technical knowledge? This is one five days training will not suffice you to keep improving. So NCRT keeps doing regular programs. If you go to CIET website, you should be connected to, <clears throat> you need to be connected regularly to improve yourself and knowledge. There are three options for you. One is workshop and training. Every first week and second week, you have training on cyber safety. So it is in first week in English version. Second week will be always in Hindi version. <clears throat> Similarly, third week, Fourth week, you will be learning about some education technology. For third week in English version, fourth week in Hindi version. So you can just come here, watch all the live sessions. You can directly live participate or learn. You can join the course, do your course, participate in the assessment and get your certificate. This, but this year, all the trainings which are done from last June onwards is open till 35 March. So already more than nine, 10 uh, courses are done. So if you have missed anything, you can even go to online courses. <clears throat> there are many online courses NCRT keeps running. This is all short courses, which is on education technology, developing content, cyber safety. You can go directly join the course and learn. It is just five hours course. So you can anytime join at your own thing and then learn. The next one is Vina. You must have listened so many software names in the last four days. How do you learn one by one? You can see we have done more than 1,000 sessions. Initially, we have done everything in, in English. Now we are repeating the tools in Hindi. So you can go and search the tool here and do one tool at a time. Learn one by one. You can watch the video. Go through for every tool, we have one hour session video here in detail. You can watch this and you can learn. So it is very, very important for us to improve this knowledge if we wanted to implement in our classroom in a better way. Not only developing e-content is important, we need to develop the skills. While you are trying to develop, we also should understand that we should keep embodied learning in our mind. 
what is embodied learning? I'm just just going to show you one, one example. I'm going to give you this presentations which you can watch completely. So I've just shown some two examples, but I've kept, kept some videos for you to watch here. What is meaning of embodied learning? Embodied learning is involving cognitive, psychological, and physical together. When you use this sky view light, you use your whole body to move around. Physically, you were involved, right? And when you were watching the sky, you were cognitively involved to identify what planet is coming, what stars are there. There was an option to click on that and read as well, right? You were also cognitively involved. And you were also involved psychologically. Ma'am was telling I was excited. You were getting that interest. You were getting involved. All these are psychological aspect. Many times when we start integrating technology, we forget everything. We become technocrats like mission. We focus only watching device. This will kill education. When you integrate technology in your classroom, we need to ensure that we are really integrating psychological, cognitive and physical, which is all called as embodied learning. So when you also, it is not infused learning, infused learning is different and embodied learning is different. Embodied learning is involving your all three domains, right? Infusing is you bring some technology into your classroom. That's a complete different thing. This is very important because today in the name of ICT integration, we are forgetting physical involvement we are forgetting, forgetting psychological aspect, which will on a longer run kill the education value system. So we need to always keep in this mind when you're planning to integrate. So the fourth step is implement. When you implement this in classroom, always do action research. Always technology is not good. Technology is double sword. Sometime without your understanding, technology can bring a nasty thing to the classroom. It can bring disaster to your classroom. So we need to be watchful. So whenever you use any technology in your classroom, first do pilot. Try to observe what kind of impact it is creating, how it is affecting my children psychologically. Is there some behavioral change when I use such technology? All this need to be evaluated while your implementation. Then only we can really talk about effective ICT integration. So with this, I stop. So any questions, I can take one or two questions. Otherwise, let's close this. Any one or two questions? Saurabh, sir, do you have a question? You raised your hand. Yeah, yes, sir. Um, please uh, explain the difference between integrated and infused. Sorry, sir. Integrated infused. and infused. Sir, integrated, integrated means you can segregate the content and the technology. 
like tools like Padlet, Mentimeter, Kahoot, all these are integrated tools. When you use it in your classroom, you are integrating into your classroom, but you can change content into the tools. But infuse okay. the tools like your GeoGebra, all the subject specific tools are inter infused level. Like if you are oh. running your class in a learning management system, then it is at infused level, right? Yes, 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 yes. thank you. Aparna, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. It was a nice session. I like that. Uh, actually, very interesting also. And that uh, social science students have done that one, a Skyview app. They have used this one. But uh, I am I am from physics uh, subject. So uh, we had, uh, yesterday, we had a physics class only. So we don't know about the Skyview app. And uh, just now you have told, and uh, it's very interesting. I have used this one, but I uh, couldn't uh, download or screenshot. I uh, couldn't take how to take screenshot and how to download or how to share this with the other. And so what you need to do is you have to go to our webinar session and you have to learn one by one because it's just an initiation. You should think this session like a trailer of your movie. Yes. So this, I have just given you a glimpse. Now it is now your time to see whether you liked this trailer or not. Only if you like the tribal trailer, you will go to the movie. So if you like this trailer, go to the movie from the webinar session, watch the full movie, learn about the software. Okay? Yeah. So I stop you, here and over to Dr. Nidhi. I'm Thank sorry, you. whoever is coordinating. Thank yeah, you so Dr. much, ma'am. Thank you so yeah, much, ma'am, for giving us uh, such information for relating content, pedagogy, and technology in detail and uh, answering all the queries of the participants. We always get a lot of uh, useful information uh, from your session. So I hope all the participants must have uh, gathered the information which they are definitely going to use in the classroom. So thank you so much, ma'am.